The origins of the modern survivalist movement goes back as far as the Great Depression that followed the Wall Street crash of 1929 and is cited by survivalists as an example of the need to be prepared. However, going back as far as human history can remember, mankind has always had to deal with cyclical events such as the approach of winter. The Inuit people, for instance, had several ways of preparing meat and fish for a longer food storage of their hunted bounty. The first way was to cook the meat and eat it fresh. However, this was not very common because of the shortage of fuel for cooking. The second method was to dry the meat as a way to preserve it. They also froze meat to save it and eat later. In modern times, the Cold War era civil defense programs promoted public atomic bomb shelters, personal fallout shelters, and training for children such as the duck and cover films. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, known as the Mormons, long directed its members to store a year's worth of food for themselves and their families in preparation for such possibilities. The Mormons even have a free PDF preparedness manual that I will provide a link to in the description of this video. In the 1960s, increasing inflation, the U.S. monetary devaluation of the dollar, and the continued concern over a possible nuclear exchange between the U.S. and the Soviet Union caused a number of primarily conservative and libertarian thinkers to promote individual preparations. During this time, a man named Harry Brown began offering seminars on how to survive a monetary collapse in 1967 with Don Stevens, an architect, providing input on how to build and equip a remote survival retreat. In the decade to follow, Howard Ruff warned about a socio-economic collapse in his 1974 book, Famine and Survival in America. Ruff's book was published during a period of rampant inflation in the wake of the 1973 oil embargo crisis. Most of the elements of survivalism can be found there, including advice on food storage. The book championed the claim that precious metals, such as gold and silver, have an intrinsic worth that makes them more usable in the event of a socioeconomic collapse rather than fiat currency. During this time, firearms instructor and survivalist Colonel Jeff Cooper wrote articles about hardening survival retreats against small arms fire. In an article titled Notes on Tactical Residential Architecture, Cooper suggested using the Valban principle whereby projecting bastion corners would prevent miscreants from being able to approach a retreat's exterior walls in any blind spots. Corners with this simplified implementation of a Valban star are now called Cooper Corners by James Wesley Rawls in honor of Jeff Cooper. Depending on the size of the group needing shelter, design elements of traditional European castle architecture have been suggested for survival retreats. James Wesley Rawls has written several survivalist books in a narrative type storyline and in his survivalist novel Patriots, a novel of survival in the coming collapse, Rawls describes in great detail retreat groups, upgrading, brick or other masonry houses with steel reinforced window shutters and doors. He explains in his novel excavating anti-vehicular ditches, installing warded gate locks, constructing Constantina wire obstacles, and setting up listening posts and observation posts. Rawls is also an advocate of including a man trap foyer at survival retreats, an architectural element that he calls the crush room. For a time in the 1970s, the terms survivalist and retreater were used interchangeably. While the term retreater eventually fell into disuse, many who subscribed to it saw retreating as the more rational approach to conflict avoidance. Survivalism, on the other hand, tended to take on a more media, sensationalized, combative, shoot it out with the looters image, thus somewhat demonizing the survivalist movement during the 70s. In 1980, John Pugsley published the book The Alpha Strategy, 
It was on the New York Times bestseller list for nine weeks in 1981. After 28 years in circulation, the Alpha strategy remains popular with survivalists and is considered a standard reference on stocking food and household supplies as a hedge against inflation and future shortages. Author Ragnar Benson's 1982 book, Live Off the Land, In the City and Country, suggested rural survival retreats as both a preparedness measure and conscious lifestyle change that many adopt to this day. Interest in the survivalist movement picked up during the Clinton administration due to the debate surrounding the federal assault weapons ban. By the way, the term assault weapon is a pejorative term made up totally bogus since one can be assaulted by any implement, even a box cutter. Some survivalist concerns and preparations have changed over the years. During the 1970s, fears were based on economic collapse, hyperinflation, and famine. Preparations included food storage and survival retreats. Some survivalists stockpiled precious metals and barterable goods, such as common caliber ammunition, because they assumed that paper currency would become worthless. During the early 1980s, Nuclear war became a common fear, and some survivalists constructed fallout shelters. The survivalist movement peaked again in 1999, triggered by fears of the Y2K computer bug. Before extensive efforts were made to rewrite computer programming code to mitigate the effects, some writers anticipated widespread power outages, food and gasoline shortages, and other emergencies. Some raised the alarm because they thought Y2K code fixes were not being made quickly enough. Another wave of survivalism began after the September 11, 2001 attacks and subsequent bombings in Bali, Madrid, and London. This resurgence of interest in survivalism appears to be as strong as the 1970s era focus on the topic. The fear of war, avian influenza, energy shortages, coupled with economic uncertainty, Hurricane Katrina has increased interest in survivalism topics ever since. In the wake of the Great Recession from 2008, many books were published offering survival advice for various potential disasters, ranging from an energy shortage and crash to nuclear or biological terrorism. In addition to the 1970s era books, YouTube video channels, blogs, and internet forums are a popular way of disseminating survivalist information to the general public. Additionally, Doomsday Ideas disseminated mostly online in relation to the 2012 phenomena surrounding the misunderstandings about the Mayan calendar fueled the activities of some survivalists during the run-up to the phenomenon's purported December 2012 date of the world's demise. Today, a number of popular movies such as The Book of Eli, The Road, and the newly remade Mad Max blockbuster, tethered along with TV shows such as the National Geographic's channel Doomsday Preppers, which some believe has notably somewhat coined the modern term prepper, have given a new outlook for the modern day survivalist, also known as the prepper.